Well, Daniel, thank you for having us here in, uh, in Detroit, uh, the home of Chevrolet, mm -hmm. uh, for this uh, event uh, where you're showing all the technology and all that. And like, when we talk about cars, a lot of people, I mean, most of the people, just think about the looks of the car, but nobody thinks about how much work goes under the hood. Yeah. And that's your job, right? Like you're yes. responsible for every engine that goes in the, yeah. under the hood for every Chevrolet yes. or GM. Yes, world, I, have right? the, I have the pleasure to lead the team of 8,700 people responsible wow. for all the engines and transmissions and propulsion systems that mm -hmm. go under the hood of um, Chevrolet products around the globe. So the internal combustion engine, I mean, has mm -hmm. obviously changed a lot since like the, yep. the, the, the first days of, of the vehicle. But in the past few years, let's say, I don't know, maybe you can tell me like five, ten years, the evolution has been like very, very fast, right? Yes, it has. It's really accelerated um, and we're increasing at a, a, at a very rapid pace with technology. So um, it's, ex it's a very exciting time to be in this part of the business because there's new challenges. Is that pushed by like the, requirement, the requirements from governments around the world by like the efficiency of the cars, like the mandate to be more efficient, like the, the customer's requirement to, to get more from cars? Or what is the pushing? It's like a combination of all, I guess. Yeah, there's a, it's really a combination of factors. But um, rather than talking about all the things that are, let's say, pushing it, what I like to talk about is the people and the engineers that really enable it because yeah. it's the people that power the innovation and make it happen. So it's engineers working really hard and other people that allow this technology to come to market. So can you, I mean, obviously you won't have a, a, enough time to do it. I mean, it could take days. But can you, like, talk about the process? Of how, how does that yeah. process work? I mean, you get into, yeah. like, the, the new cruise, for example, that is yeah. debuting tonight. It's already pretty efficient. So how does how does that process go? I mean, like... Yeah, it's, it's actually part of the overall vehicle development process because we could not bring the 1.4 liter turbo out with 40 mile per gallon unless the vehicle has lower mass. Yeah. And so we really have to work together to get vehicle downsizing and reduced mass. And that allows, let's say, smaller and smaller displacement engines um, in order to enable some of the fuel economy. I should also say that we're working on many new technologies. And then what we do in, in powertrain to support Chevrolet is when we start a program for a vehicle, we have to select what technologies will go into this yeah. engine, which ones provide value for the customer, um, and which ones will help us meet our goals and our requirements. And then we do lots of testing, um, and we design it into a package and to what you see today. So um, it's almost like a miracle because you said like yeah. 8,000 yeah. people just for the engine, yeah. and then like many other suppliers and everything for the yeah. rest of the car. So it's like yeah. pretty amazing. Uh, logistic work, right? Yes. It, this is really what people don't understand is this is really a people business. I mean, the amount of cooperation required to bring a product like the Chevrolet Cruze to market is really huge. And it's not just, um, you know, we touched on the powertrain piece, but it's the extended enterprise of our suppliers and getting everybody to work together to really achieve these goals. It's really quite quite fascinating. So the Cruze is the most sold uh, Chevrolet vehicle around the world, right? That's correct. And uh, mm -hmm. so for this new generation, it's uh, for the U.S. what power engines is going to have. Yeah, we're, we have the 1.4 liter gasoline engine that we talked about. It's it's now with 153 horsepower from the 1.4 liter, and that's um, you know our main uh, powertrain for the Chevrolet Cruze. Uh, and then I also talked about the 1.6 Flister diesel that we will have for the U.S. market as well. So the diesel, I mean, it's already the, the Cruze already had a diesel in the past generation, yes. right? But this is like much more advanced. I mean, talking about advancement, this is not only quieter, but it's like very clean and very, very efficient. So what would you tell to people who are not still convinced about diesel, that they said maybe it's a little bit more expensive to begin with, like the actual diesel is more expensive in most states. So what will be the argument for you to convince them to get in one of these? Yeah, what, what we would like to do, well, first of all, we want to participate in um, diesel offerings to get customers more excited about it. We want to lead in the mid-size segment for diesels. So there's, let's say, 37,000 customers that want a diesel that bought a Jetta instead of a Cruise. Yeah. And so we want to um, reduce, I think, that number, and we look at that as an opportunity. So um, it doesn't make sense for every customer, but I think for people uh, objectively, if they look at it and they do a lot of driving, um, it, it could make sense for them. So that's the main factor, like the longer driver, the longer commutes and all that kind of things. That's like the best argument for people to get into a diesel? Yeah, let's, let's say it this way. The more highway driving you do and the more you drive your car, if you're high mileage per year, 
then it makes more sense. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yep. Are we going to keep uh, exploring now the whole new thing for the power chain for Chevrolet? Yeah. Great, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.